This lesson is on graphing linear inequalities. So when we talk about an inequality, we want to talk about what does x is greater than 5 mean? And we talked about this a little bit when we were solving inequalities. If this is your number line, here would be 0. There's 5. x is greater than 5 means everything bigger than 5. Now, does it get to equal 5? And so there's no. So that's why we do the open circle. Um, and so everything that's shaded represents the solution to this. You can't represent the solution with like x equals 6 because you'd also have x equals 7 and x equals 8 and x equals 6.2 and you'd be here forever if you were listing all the numbers that x could be. So we represent it with an inequality and when you do that on a graph you have to shade. Now how far does this shaded part go to the right? It goes to infinity. <clears throat> how close does it get to a 5? It gets infinitely close to that 5 but it, will ne it can never actually be the 5. Okay so let's look at the next one. This is x is less than or equal to negative 3. So here's my 0. There's negative 3. Less than is to the left. Now what does this equal to mean? Well that means we actually get to be a negative 3. So when we do our circle, we actually close it in to represent that, hey, I can be a negative 3. So the open circle says I can be everything up to the 5 or down to the 5, but I can't actually be the 5. This says that I can be everything up to the 3 and including the 3. But again, this goes to negative infinity. It goes forever. So again, we represent that as a graph. Well, when we have a graph of a linear inequality, it has the same concept. Now, we're going to use the whole y equals mx plus b. I know that my y-intercept is a negative 3 and my slope is 2. So I'm going to go down 3, just like we've done before. And then I'm going to go up 2, write 1. Do it one more time because I can't draw a straight line. Before you draw your line, we have to address the is it equal to or is it not. Since this is not equal to, it does not have that bar underneath it, then my line is a dotted line. And that just says I can't actually be this line, but I can be everything up to this line. If it was equal to, it would have a solid line. And we'll do one of those here in a second. Now, this inequality says less than. These you do not think of as a number line. This is not an above, this is not a right or a left. It is above or a below. So since I'm less than, I shade below the line. So all of these points in here represent possible solutions to this inequality. Now what about this point right here that's on the line? He would not work uh, because he is on the line that is dotted. So he, he would not work for just a less than. He would work if it was less than or equal to. But he doesn't work since there's no equal to's. So the, the solution to this is the picture. It is the graph. Okay, so here we look at number one. First of all, what's my y-intercept? It's a negative 2, so I've got a negative 2, and I put a dot. My slope is a negative 1, so that means down 1, right 1. And my solid line or a dotted line? And the answer is a dotted because I do not have an equal to. So I'm a dotted line. And this is greater than. Greater than you shade above. Above the line. So that picture represents everything that's a part of that graph for the solution. Number two, and again, these are really nice because they're already solved for y, so enjoy that while it lasts. Um, my y-intercept is a 4. Go up to 4 and put a dot. My slope is negative 3. So down 3, write 1. Down 3, write 1. You could do this forever if you wanted to. Um, now, would this one be a solid or a dotted line? It would be a solid line because it has the equal to. So this is kind of like this guy that has the equal to. It's a filled in circle. This is our solid line. And this guy that has an open circle, that's kind of like our dotted line. 
So this one's going to be a solid line because it has the equal to. And this is less than and less than U shade below. Again, remember, this is always an above or below question because it's talking about the Ys. Um, it is not a right-left issue. It is an above or below. Okay, so number three, now we get to the fun part where you actually have to solve for a Y. So to solve for a Y, <clears throat> I have to add 4X to both sides. Watch out for your inequalities when you're solving for Y because if you multiply or divide by negative, you've got to flip your sign. I'm not. I'm just adding 4, so no flippage. I'm going to put the X value first, and now I'm ready to go. So where do we start? We're going to go down 1 and put a dot, and then up 4, right 1. And I'm going to go one more time. Solid or dotted. And this is a dotted line because it does not have an equal to. Remember when you shade it is above or below the line, not a right left. This is a greater than and greater than is above the line. So that would actually be all of this up here. So that is greater than. Number four to solve for Y, the first thing you would do is subtract X. And then I'm not done because I have to divide by negative 1. Now those are the magical words because we just said divide by negative. So I have to flip my sign. A negative x divided by a negative 1 is a positive x. And a positive 4 divided by a negative 1 is a negative 4. And now I'm ready to graph. I go down 4. Put my dot. And my slope is 1, so that means up 1, right 1. Would this be a solid line or a dotted line? And the answer is dotted because it does not have the equal to. And this is less than and less than is shaded below the line. Okay, this one's got a little bit more meat on it. So to solve for Y, I'm going to add 2X. So negative 3Y, don't flip, 2X minus 6. My next step is to divide by negative 3Y. Now, do I flip? Yes, because I divided by a negative. So I flip. 2 over negative 3 is going to give me a negative 2 thirds x. And negative 6 divided by negative 3 is a positive 2. So I go up 2 and put a dot for my y intercept. My slope is negative 2 thirds, so down 2, right 3. Solid or dotted? And the answer is solid because it has the equal to. And is this above or below? Since this is greater than, this is above. Number six. If I'm solving for Y, first thing I need to do is add X. X plus four. Then I need to divide by negative two. Do you flip? Yes. Now this is 1 divided by a negative 2. So the negative gets kicked up to the top, 1 half x, and then a 4 divided by negative 2 is a negative 2. So for this one, we're going to go down 2 and put a dot, and then I'm going to go down 1, right 2. And this is a dotted line because it does not have the equal to. And less than is shaded below. OK, 
Okay, so these are the two. This is our weird guy and the super freak, the super weird guy. So you know that one of these is your horizontal line and one of these is your vertical line. If you remember, the one that has a Y, that's just your sort of weird. His slope is a zero. His Y intercept is a three. Remember, he has stuff. This guy, his slope is undefined. And so is his Y intercept. Because he's the super freak. He's the super weird guy. So back to number seven. My Y intercept is a three, so I go up to three and I put a dot. And a slope of zero, you should automatically know, is a horizontal line. But then you have to ask yourself, is it solid or dotted? And the answer here is that it's dotted. Y is less than, so we shade everything below. Okay, now the super freak, of course, he's got something weird to him. He's undefined, undefined. You know that means he's a vertical line. Where do I go? I go on the x-axis to negative 2, and I put my dot, and I'm going to draw a vertical line. Solid or dotted, and it's going to be solid because we have the equal to. Well, that's not very straight, but um, this is the only line that does not have an above or a below. It only has a right or a left. So this is the only time you can think right, left. All other times you think above or below. This is the only time you can think right, left. Now, to the right it is greater than, because if you think about it, that makes sense. That's where stuff gets bigger. And to the left is less than, because that's where stuff gets smaller. Well, what do we have? We have greater than, so we shade to the right. Again, this is the only time you think right, left. All other times you think above and below. Okay, so here's how they, and you know who they are, can take this and crank it up just to mess with you. So it says, which inequality is modeled by the graph below? So here they have given you a graph, and they want to know which equation goes with it. Okay, well, let's step back and look at the super obvious first. Is this line a solid line or a dotted line? It's a solid line. So should we have an equal to or not? And the answer is we should. So it can't be B or D because they don't have an equal to. Now, if you look at the difference between A and C, well, C is already solved for Y, so let's test him out first. So his Y intercept is a 4. Go up to 4 and put a dot. Yep, I like that so far. So far, so good. My slope is a 1. Well, that means up 1, right 1. Up 1, right 1. Is that going to work for this graph? No, it's not going to work. So it has to be A. But let me just show you why. A is not done solving for Y. So you have to actually take this guy and solve him for Y. So you're going to subtract X from both sides. Now let's test him. His Y intercept is 4. Yep, like that. His slope is a negative 1. That's down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. I like that. Solid line, yep. Less than means shade below, and I like that too. So he is definitely our winner. So when you come across a problem like this, step back and see if you can eliminate any of the answers. But don't forget what you know about slope and y-intercept. Okay, so here's a variation of that. Now they have given us a graph, but they have not given us equations. They have given us word problems. It says, which scenario could be modeled by the graph below? And I'm just going to be super honest. A lot of people miss these because they are too lazy to work it out. Okay, so let's look at A. A says, three times the number of video games Y. And I'll, I'll write that we're doing A right here. Plus, two times the number of DVDs X. Is at most... Okay, now, think back to unit one, and what is at most? 
Mom, I'm going to the mall. I need at most 60 bucks for this pair of shoes. They are at most 50, 60 bucks. That means less than or equal to. So how am I going to tell if this is A, if, if this is the graph of A? Well, I have to solve it for Y. So I have to subtract 2X. 3Y is less than or equal to negative 2X plus 60. Divide by 3. Y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds X plus 20. Okay, let's test it. So the y-intercept is 20. Up 20, put a dot. Yep, like that. Down 2, right 3. Down 2, right 3. Yep, like that. Solid line. Uh-huh. Less than, shade below. I like it. Answer's A. If the answer happened to not be A, then I would scratch that and I'd go solve another one. So I'm going to show you why... Um, I don't know. We'll try C. And I'm going to show you why C doesn't work. Okay, so here's C. 2 times the number of video games Y plus the number of DVDs X is at most, mom, I need at most 60 bucks. That's less than or equal to 60. Got to solve for Y. So I'm subtract X. Divide by 2. Y is less than or equal to negative 1 half plus 30. Well, it's a solid line. It's less than. I like that. Slope is negative, although I don't think it's a negative 1 half. But here's the big kicker. What's his y-intercept? 30. Does this graph go through 30? No. And that's why C doesn't work. And B would not work. And D would not work. Now, obviously, once you found that A is, a is the, the one that works, you don't need to go try B, C, and D. But I just wanted you to see what it looks like when you set one of these up that doesn't work. So here's another one of these, number 11. And again, the reason people miss these is because they are too lazy to work it out. So number 11. So let's try A. And I'm going to label what I'm doing. So when I find one that works, I know which one I'm on. It says the number of pounds of apples Y minus 2 times the number of pounds of oranges X. 2 times oranges. At most, I'm going to need at most $5. It's so less than or equal to 5. If I'm going to solve for Y, I'm going to add 2X. Y is less than or equal to 2X plus 5. I like the y-intercept. But this slope is 2. That means it would go up 2, right 1. Up 2, right 1. Is that what I want? No, that's not what I want. I need my slope to be negative. Okay, I'm going to erase him out of the way. So now let's try B. The number of pounds of apples Y minus half the number of pounds of oranges, X, is at most, less than or equal to, 5. Well, that's got a fraction in it. But to solve for Y, all I need to do is move this whole negative 1 half X term. So I'm just going to add 1 half X over. So Y is less than or equal to 1 half X plus 5. I like the y intercept that's 5. I like that. My slope is one half. That means up one, right two. That's not going to work. Again, I need my slope to be negative. So we'll erase him. Okay, so now let's try C. And again, you can see why some students just say, you know what, I'm just not going to do all this work. I'm just going to try to read it and eyeball it and guess. Well, you have a 25% chance of getting it right and a 75% chance of getting it wrong. It's not worth it. This is not that difficult. It just takes you deciding that you're going to roll up the, your sleeves and do the work. So let's look at C. <clears throat> the number of pounds of apples Y plus 2 times the number of pounds of oranges X plus 2X is at most less than or equal to 5. To solve for Y, I'm going to subtract 2X. 
negative 2x plus 5. Up 5, yep, like that. Ooh, now we have a negative slope. That's good. Down to right 1. Down to right 1. I like that. Solid line, uh-huh. Less than, shade below, yes. Winner. So, strongest piece of advice on these problems. Roll your sleeves up and do the work. These are not difficult. There are other problems that are much more difficult than this. Go miss those. Don't miss this one just because you're too lazy to work it out.